The X399 Phantom Gaming 6 from ASRock. X399 Gaming. That's like saying I'm gonna go get my gardening AK. This is a budget enthusiast Threadripper board. I mean, obviously if you're interested in Threadripper, you're interested in serious computation, but gaming, Threadripper? This is a 2920 system build in the Torque, and we're gonna take a deep look at it. Yeah, so what's up with the gardening AK? I mean, the, uh, the gaming X6. Well, first off, Phantom Gaming is a new brand from ASRock. I mean, it's a really uh, a new initiative from ASRock. And they're not just making uh, motherboards with this, they're also making graphics cards. In this, I've got an RX 590 at the moment, although there's an RX 590 and an RX 580 floating around. Well, I don't wanna spoil it though. Back to that in a minute. We're using the Cooler Master Wraith Ripper all-in-one cooler, and we're using a Threadripper 2920X. That's the 12 core Threadripper, so it's not as expensive as the 16 core. But there have also been a lot of sales lately where you could get the 1950X, the first gen Threadripper, for you know, five, six hundred dollars, something like that. Now, you're not going to get precision boost overdrive with that, and with the 2920X, I've really been enjoying that 4.2 to 4.3 gigahertz precision boost overdrive. But let's talk about the system build first and the motherboard. First off, this is one of the least expensive Threadripper motherboards you can buy. I mean, that thing has like 4,000 pins. It's complicated. It is difficult to build a motherboard that supports the Threadripper processor. So for a motherboard at this price point, you're gonna give up some things. First off, the first thing that you're gonna give up, but you're not really giving up anything, is if you're buying this $1,700 32 core Threadripper CPU, that's 250 watts. That's not really recommended or supported for this motherboard. This motherboard is designed for 180 watt parts only. Now you may be thinking, well, that's gonna limit my overclockability a little bit, isn't it? And the reality is no, not really. I've got the um, 2920X in here and I have overclocked it to the max, 4.3 gigahertz, getting like super hot. It is an eight phase VRM design. It is a weaker eight phase power design, but it's really designed for the 180 watt CPUs. It's not designed for 250 watt CPUs. That said, in Ryzen Master, in terms of being able to overclock the CPU and really open it up with PBO, you know, I could specify up to 250 watts and 400 watts for the short and long duration sustained for this motherboard. It does have two eight pin power connectors, although really you only need the one unless you're running a lot of graphics cards. And the other uh, sacrifice, the other big sacrifice on this motherboard is the PCI Express slot layout. Instead of giving you a lot of expansion slots, you have three by 16 slots, but you actually have a good situation there because all three of them are by 16. Instead of, you know, having two by 16s and two by eight or, you know, uh, two by 16s and three by four and an extra M.2 or something like that, you just have three slots that are by 16. And that's because of the superior PCI Express connectivity of Threadripper. Now, if you're running something like the ASRock Ultra Quad M.2 with four M.2s as an add-in card, you can totally shove that in the bottom slot. You can set up the, the uh, PCI splitting just fine on any of the three slots on this motherboard. So in terms of like, you know, Reddit, serve the home, or if you're gonna build like a 1950 based home server, this motherboard would be a pretty good choice. And the main reason for that is the PCI Express layout, the low cost, but also because it has a built-in Intel i211 AT network as well as the Phantom Gaming 2.5 gig NIC. Now the Phantom Gaming 2.5 gig NIC is based on the Realtek, you know, Dragon chipset. It is a 2.5 gigabit ethernet chipset. So if you're running a switch or something that supports at least 2.5 gig, or if you've got a 10 gig switch that supports the new two and a half and five gig protocols, that will work just great with this. I also tested SMB multi-channel, meaning that I can plug a cable into both network ports and on Windows, SMB multi-channel just sort of takes over, connected to a network storage appliance, the level one server with the 10 gig connection. And that worked just fine to give me 3.5 gigabit total bandwidth from our Phantom Gaming motherboard to the server. Now Phantom Gaming, you know, Threadripper, you might think gaming and Threadripper don't really go together, but the gaming experience on here was actually pretty good. For the memory, I'm using G-Skill Flare X memory. It gave me a nice, cool, you know, 65 nanosecond latency. I'm using it in uh, uh, local local mode, yeah, local mode. So I've got two NUMA nodes for my two six-core 
rise and dies. And that means that I'm looking at about 100 gigabytes per second, almost 100 gigabytes per second raw memory throughput from the four memory channels that I've got in here now, because this is a, a budget setup. I've just got 32 gigabytes in here. Although if you wanted to run error correcting memory, error correcting memory is supported and detected correctly. So again, in terms of the, uh, you know, serve the home or home server or home thread ripper server. It's a pretty good choice there. It also has eight SATA ports. It has three M.2s, one with a heat shield, plus a fourth M.2 that's configured for Wi-Fi. So if you want to run an M.2 Wi-Fi, it comes with the M.2 slot for that, as well as a slot breakout cover so that you can run, you know, up to a three by three solution with your M.2, which I think is really the way to do that. There are eight USB 3 ports at the back, two of which are 10 gigabit per second, one type A and one type C. There is no front panel USB-C on this motherboard, but it does have two USB 3.0 headers. So you can have up to four USB 3.0 front panel connections with this motherboard, but no type C connection either. So again, cost saving. One place that we've also seen on budget boards that suffers a little bit when you're talking about um, you know, performance is memory speed compatibility. Now out of the box, it says DDR4 3400 uh, plus for the overclock and officially even the second gen Threadripper only supports up to 2933. But our Flare X kit is running just fine at 3200. No compatibility problems there. In fact, I think that even though this is a lower cost board because it came out later, I think memory compatibility is gonna be a little bit better than some of the first gen Threadripper boards, which is a little paradoxical, but hey, what are you gonna do? Now, of course, I've put all of this in the lovely Antec Torque case, which is very much the antithesis of a cost-saving measure. It's made out of lovely aluminum and tempered glass, and this really does turn the machine into a showpiece. I've set the, uh, the RGBs to freak out mode, at least for what's on the motherboard. It does have a digital header and two 50-50 headers. So in terms of RGB control, you're not really giving up anything as far as the Phantom Gaming goes. I will say that it would be nice if the Phantom Gaming had a built-in IO shield because the, uh, you know, the Antec Torque doesn't really give you any kind of a provision to hold that, that uh, ATX IO shroud in place. That said, it really doesn't look too bad without the IO shield. So can't really complain too much about that. So overall, I'm really happy with this build. The Antec Torque case is complete overkill. It's a showpiece. If you're into this kind of an aesthetic, this build is, is really accessible. It's pretty straightforward to do. You don't have to do anything exotic. The airflow in here is pretty good. I'm gonna probably add some more RGB fans to the top, but with our Wraith Ripper cooler, it's actually doing a pretty good job helping with airflow around the motherboard. The VRMs didn't get too hot, even with an A to 64 torture test. And the real plan for this system is a new VFIO system. Yes, I've actually got two graphics cards, an RX 590 and an RX 580. Now the RX 590's a little problematic on Linux. The 4.20 with the DRM next branch plus some patches, you can get the 590 to work on Linux. But I'm gonna use the 580, the Phantom Gaming RX 580, as a graphics card for my Linux system. And I'm gonna pass through the RX 590 to my Linux system, or to my Windows system that's running as a virtual machine in Linux. And this ends up being one heck of a Threadripper value system. Uh, he's just enjoying a game of Fallout 76. Well, no, no one can enjoy a, fall, a game of Fallout 76, but I am enjoying the new Threadripper system, but wait. Oh my gosh, it's not really, it's Windows. Behold the magic of VFIO and Looking Glass. Now, if you want that video, that's gonna be on the Linux channel. It's already shot pretty much. So you can go check it out. This is the awesome Threadripper 12 core system. Six for my Windows VM, six for my Linux host. I'm running an RX 580 and an RX 590. Now the 590 I'm gonna give to Windows and the 580 I'm gonna give to Linux. I could even run dual NVMe RAID, the store MI RAID for Windows. And then Linux has built-in MD RAID, which you would use, not, you wouldn't use store MI, you would just use the built-in Linux RAID. And so I could, I could do that kind of a thing if I really want to, but yeah, this system, really awesome virtualization system. I can run both. And because the 580 and the 590 are close enough, I could reboot and have both graphics cards in Windows for like a dual boot type situation. But if I don't want to, I can run the Windows virtual machine. And that's totally fine. That's the magic of VFIO. And that's the magic of looking glass. But that's a video for another time. So if you liked it, you know, thumbs up. If not, well, I mean, I guess there's another option for now. Or you could comment. I'm going to hang out in the level one forums. I'll see you there.